Hi everybody, this is Ray, this is Life and Vibe, and today I am playing Barbie's Salty Aunt, and I am getting ready to get some training from Jessie Lee Ward, and so I don't know, I'm gonna, kind of, I know I've seen it on other channels from other creators, but it's been very uh it's been over a long period of time with a lot of commentary and so i'm hoping that i'm going to kind of let her play and maybe not respond too much uh and just kind of listen because you know this is exclusive training i am receiving today i'm excited this is the exclusive training that jesse lee wood has been recently offering people outside of her Prove It Empire downline and I understand this is a paid training course teaching us how to be entrepreneurs and high level performance entrepreneurs and all of that good stuff and good, good mindset and so supposedly for five days of training, I think each session is about an hour long. We are going to be immersed in the world of Jesse Lee Ward's training, and we have been asked as creators, in uh, those of us who are here trying to show others how um, this type of training and mindset works in this type of business model, primarily the business model of multi level marketing. So I believe this is a training that can be open to any type of business owner or any type of entrepreneur. And since I have recently uh, started a YouTube channel and have been putting out more regularly videos, I decided that, you know, I need to learn to be an entrepreneur because obviously I work a regular job. I work as a registered nurse. I'm in grad school training to be a nurse practitioner. And so I think I need to get some boss level training tonight. So I'm excited. I'm, I've got my books all out. I'm ready to learn from the best. I'm ready to learn. And so anyway, let's see what Jesse has to offer us. I'm excited. And so anyway, I'm going to see if she gets me to any salt shakers by the end of uh, the uh, video. And so I think I'm probably going to do this in two parts. I'll probably do a part one and a part two. Um, and uh, I, I think it's kind of easier to swallow the content that way sometimes. <laughs> Not like that. But anyway, if there's any trigger warnings, I'm just throwing them out there right now. Trigger warnings, of course, because we're listening to Jesse Lee Ward. So I, you know, I, I don't know which road this could take. Like I said, I've kind of seen it. Uh, bits and pieces, but I've kind of had it all in the background when I've been writing papers. So I haven't necessarily paid a lot of attention uh, to a great deal of the content. <laughs> and so, yeah, if you like this content though, please hit the like, subscribe so you can see more of my videos responding to just as what's, you know, going on in this type of uh, industry. And, uh, you know, personal growth, life coaching. MLMs, they all kind of mesh together at the end of the day. And then, uh, you know, make a comment if you want. Those are my dogs uh, after the neighbors. Okay, anyway, uh, let's get going. I'm very, feeling very studious tonight. I've, I've got papers to write this weekend, so I'm ready. Let's go. Hello everybody, what is going on? Welcome to the five day recruiting boot camp challenge with yours truly, Jesse Lee Ward, boss Lee, obviously as well. I am so excited you're here with me today. I'm so excited I have you with me for the next five days with some of my special guests that are going to come in as well. I'm really looking forward to teaching and training and also quite frankly, getting you results pretty much immediately in your business. And so if that excites you, let us know in the chat. Uh, tell us where you're coming in from. Let us know what you're looking forward to. And I do want to thank you for those of you that were participating in the Facebook group all week long. Uh, it was really cool to see the topics you want to learn. It was really awesome to see how congruent all the things I'll be teaching you these five days are in alignment with 
I think everyone said this. Hey, Jesse Lee, 2015 wants its Facebook group back. <laughs> and she always loves to ask this first question. Where are you coming in from? She loves to know where people are coming in from, which I find astounding since Jesse Lee tends to actually be, sorry, quite xenophobic a lot of the times. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, already. Sorry, I've had a long day. I got up really early, <laughs> and so I'm, you know, probably slightly delirious just from lack of sleep uh, or it getting late or all of the above. So let's just keep going. I, I'm hoping I can learn something. It's long. It's long training. I'm, I'm only used to my seminars going on for about 30 to 40 minutes. After a certain amount of time, I'm just going to let you know, people stop listening after about 40 minutes. Okay, let's go. With what you asked for, and I really have a strong and confident feeling that you are going to get exactly out of this what you are looking for. So I guess I can go ahead and start and show you. Uh, I have a really pretty presentation ready for you, so why not get excited and share this with you? Um, let's go ahead and present at my own pace. That's what I like to say. Um, so ba 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 da 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 da. If we'll go ahead and play, I guess. Oh my goodness, it's my first day, guys. I'm just kidding. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get this, this party started and get this thing going. I can't remember how much the VIP price was. I know there was like a $17, I believe, uh, entrance to this course. And then there were other levels. Uh, I don't even know the name of the course. Was it a recruitment course? Oh, gosh. Recruiting? Oh. I guess I could recruit subs to my channel because I didn't realize it was about recruiting. I thought it was for any type of business owner. Oh, I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> oh, I guess if it's an MLO, it must be about recruiting. Okay, let me let her continue. She's very well prepared. I'm glad she has a presentation to give us a presentation. However you wish to say it. All right. Enter full screen mode. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> All right. Don't worry. With my technical difficulties, I'm, I won't charge you for this. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead. I think this is the one we are looking at here. It is day one of the boot camp. And I am so excited for all of us. I know we're going to learn a lot. I know we're going to stretch a lot and I know it's going to be unbelievable. So okay. moving forward today, we are going to talk about this just today. So it's going to be a heavy day. I hope you have your pens and papers ready. I hope you are excited. Um, we're going to talk about the importance of social media in recruiting. We're going to talk about some key concepts of how to target people and what to message people. And we're going to talk a lot about where, <laughs> what, and when that we should be messaging messaging people, etc. Oh, oh, wow. This is okay. So uh, this is not going to help me get my, my uh, YouTube channel any more promotion because obviously uh, I'm not going to treat my YouTube channel like it was a multi-level marketing company. Okay. So this is about how if I were hypothetically a MLM hun, and I was here in Jesse Lee Awards training, I, this is what I would be learning about how to get unsuspecting people <laughs> in my social circle to join a probably substandard, slightly questionable, uh, overpriced product um, that is generally found in most targets. Okay, that sounds good. Let's go. Uh, so listen, why don't we just go ahead and get started on that, okay? okay. So why is social media so important in this strategy? Okay. Why does it matter that we understand how social media works? What is the big deal with social media in 2023 and building an online business? Well, look, we are in a digital age, my friends. Would you agree? Would you agree we're in a digital age? More and more companies are relying on social media for recruiting. And believe it or not, social media is not just for making friends and just for socializing, but it has been the most important tool for finding top talent for me and my organization, and I am certain for you and in yours. And so I want to talk to you today about the importance of this, the target audiences you should be messaging, how to find these target audiences, uh, and how to recruit effectively. So 
Social media, quite frankly, has revolutionized the way that businesses recruit and hire. Um, and so uh, I was looking at some statistics and 90... Recruit and hire. I mean, those are pretty <laughs> fancy words for what is happening when somebody is approached to join a multi-level marketing business. It has metamorphosized throughout the years through a variety of names like home-based business, network marketing, multi-level marketing, pyramid scheme, allegedly. <laughs> Recruit and hire. Okay, so they will take on anybody. So you can X out the recruitment part because I can promise you no one failing the job interview for a multi-level marketing company. It doesn't matter the company. If your money is green and it's good, you're hired. So I don't know why they talk about recruiting. The only reason why they talk about recruiting is because they're out trying to grab people. It's not like you're working with a recruiter to get a good job, you know? So this is a whole different type of recruitment. They are literally looking for vulnerable people who they are going to sell a dream to that's a complete fantasy for 99% of the people who are in that business model and they are going to hire them. I mean, there is no hiring, there is no five spots only available, they will take on anybody as long as their credit card is functioning and their money is good. They don't care who you are, how old you are, how young you are, uh, what part of the globe you're from, it does not matter. It doesn't matter, okay? There's no credentials they're gonna look at, they don't care if you have a prison background, that so doesn't matter, okay? It doesn't matter if you're, where you, it just doesn't matter, okay? So let's not use these terms. You know, so <laughs> that are just not what you're looking for people who have a open credit card or debit card or whatever source of money that they can access that they are willing to use in order to have a pipe dream sold to them. That's what you're doing. All right, continue. I'm sorry. This is what happens though. This is, so you can just listen, you know, there's none of this recruit and hire. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens to people like me. I get recruited and then I get paid, you know, a large bonus for having been recruited into that position and as well, Jesse Lee. So it doesn't just happen in your world, but in your world, it happens for just a few people. In my world, it happens for far more. Percent of just jobs, like traditional jobs, use social media in their recruitment strategy. So whether that's LinkedIn, whether that's Facebook, whether that's Instagram, whether that's uh, TikTok, etc., this is going to provide every single one of you with a huge pool of potential candidates, and it will make your life a lot easier and faster to find and then also reach out to the right candidates. And so uh, leveraging social media, I'm going to help you save some time. I'm certainly going to help you save some money because time is money, right? And we're going to improve retention rates. So How? I already kind of went into this, but I have a lot of deep diving to do today. This is not just some fluffy training. Uh, and thank you so much for joining the webinar, those of you who did. I know it got you excited for more. And hopefully throughout this entire process, you go, wow, wow I like her coaching style. I want more, right? So the key in social media is understanding and knowing your target audience and then crafting your message accordingly. We're going to go deep on this today. So as an example, we talked about the target audience. It's anybody who has money. <laughs> it's really nothing more than that. What they're talking about with the target audience is what sob story do they have that they can then parlay out to try to maybe get those people to have, you know, an allegiance to them or feel that they could do it too. So, I mean, it's just, uh, anyway, the reason why we're doing these videos and putting this out there is just we want to show everybody the tactics that these people use to try to just lure anybody in because all they want is your money. They really don't care about anything else but your money. That's all they want. They don't even care if you really succeed because if you're not succeeding, they're going to tell you it's your problem. And now she's out selling this course. And I promise you, the training isn't worth it.
There's no certification. Doesn't even have a see you credit hour afterwards. That's a flop. <laughs> example for me facebook is utilized more for people who want to know me on a human oh. level facebook is utilized more for people who know about my godchildren or oh, know right. about uh my my joyful juicing kitchens or listen to me talk on just kind of a one-on-one -on -one basis almost like a family community right and so i've utilized facebook for people who are maybe uh maybe a little older maybe they are business professionals maybe they are retired uh but i'm not looking at facebook as people who are really into the lifestyle because I've utilized Instagram more for lifestyle. I've utilized uh, Instagram and TikTok more for a younger audience, a more creative audience. Not that people on Facebook are not creative. It's just a different audience. And I've been utilizing different strategies in regards to live video, posting, reels, short form video, etc. visuals to capture people's attention. So regardless of the platform, your messaging should always be focused on the unique benefits. We're going to go through this together. I know I'm just kind of giving you a 30,000 foot view right now. And some of you are like, I'm already lost. Breathe, baby. You got five days with me and you got questions. There's nothing to be lost with. I think anybody, even my 54-year-old self, knows that Facebook is really for a slightly older generation because that would be the generation that Facebook came along with. So they're comfortable using Facebook. And they like how, you know, the platform is set up to interact with people. Instagram is a lot more, you know, everyone knows that that's a younger audience. And TikTok too. And I know that, and I'm old as heck. So I, nothing has gone over my head yet. Start talking about, you know, advanced pathophysiology or advanced pharmacology. Then I may feel a little bit more lost. But this, this is basic. I, I think this is not even thinking that your own audience who, if they're paying these prices, have had some level of success. Uh, it's not even taking... Anyway, I'm sorry. You supposedly did a bunch of questionnaires. I'm sorry. <laughs> Just, <laughs> sorry. All right, right. Calm down. An answer after this. It's okay. All right. The unique benefits of working with you, the unique benefits of working with your company, your unique values, your unique culture, and whatever it is that is unique about the team that you are part of of. Okay. For some of you, that might've been a lot to jump into, but we're just going to start there and we're going to get deep dive right it. now on some branding stuff. Okay? okay. Are we ready for some branding stuff? Yes. I hope so. Yes. Okay. One second. Let me see. We're All right. So before I go into that, let's jump back into the presentation because I, I had this why. beautiful presentation for you guys. The no, importance no, of no, social no. media. I'm sorry. That's not a good presentation. Oh my God. And I'm not DC, okay? But I'm sorry. One thing that is way too many words, okay? When that's way too much, that's far too wordy. You never want to put that many little tiny words on a presentation. That looks like your notes. Put that in the notes section of the PowerPoint. You just would like, you know, just not, no. It does not look professional. The colors are actually distracting, not engaging, and I would not know. It just already, it just, it, and then it's not even the same. She's got a small lowercase r <laughs> with a, everything else is uppercase. It's like it was done by your cousin who's 12. <laughs> oh shoot sorry i wonder why i got time is going off anyway oh my god no that's already a powerpoint fail for me sorry i do a lot of powerpoints for stuff and that's just too wordy <laughs> sorry let's go it's not it's not as good as she thinks i'm sorry jesse lee just gonna give you my honest critical approach from somebody who has had a lot of years in business and worked for publishing and did a lot of presentations in her lifetime. And that would not be something that in an audience would work as a tool for PowerPoint. It's just too wordy. Okay, let's go. Recruiting. I kind of hit on this just now, but this is un 
unparalleled access. Okay. I went from a recruiter who had a couple thousand promoters over nine years into a recruiter with over 12 thousand recruits in 12 years. It gave me a wide range of access. It provided me the opportunity to attract, 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 attract. It made my life a lot easier because instead of looking desperately for leads, what happened was I was attracting the right people at the right time in all the right places. And this made my business much easier to scale because of the massive reach. Something I want you to think about as we start talking about strategies like live video is I remember I used to fill rooms And sometimes that would be full of four people and sometimes that would be full of 20 people. And sometimes that would be a super Saturday and there might be a hundred people. But I realized that when I went live on, at the time, Facebook, now it's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, everywhere. I realized that even if I only had 10 people on a live video, that was the equivalent sometimes of me filling an entire room and I didn't have to drive anywhere. I didn't have to invite anybody. It was just access. So for those of you who are not yet utilizing live video and not yet presenting your opportunity on the internet, I just want to challenge you to get in the mindset of if you are getting in front of people, it's like driving across town and renting that hotel room for a few hours for $350, but for free. The engagement and the interaction, you've seen it on my social media, perhaps. Maybe you've tagged me in something. One thing I'm curious about is you forgot to mention YouTube as a social media platform, Jesse Lee. And I, I, I'm going to throw in here, I'm a little disappointed. I've been waiting for part three of your cancer journey. And it's not been produced and released on YouTube. So I didn't know if you just got busy because you had this training you had to do. But um, I've been waiting for part three. It's been such a, an informative series about what not to do when you're uh, taking care of your cancer. But anyway, um, I do live videos on YouTube. <laughs> so I guess I have some of this right. I don't know. She's starting to lose me a little bit over here. We're only eight minutes in. Punch it up, Jesse Lee. I'm falling asleep. And I've responded. Maybe you've commented on a post of mine and I've reacted or responded with another comment. Maybe it's a comment on a photo and you've seen me respond. Maybe it's me in a live video actually addressing you as a human being as you're actually on the video with me. Well, that's all direct engagement. That is you showing people that you're an actual human being that wants people to do business. And why is this important? I want every single one of you, once you're done here, to understand the difference between cold market and warm market. Warm market is anybody who is extending any kind of olive branch and creating any kind of relationship with you. Cold market is the random creepy DMs where people slide in your inbox and say things like, hey girl, you look like an entrepreneur. Are you interested in starting a business at home with me? Like, That's cold market. If somebody is commenting on your things, if somebody is watching your stories, if somebody is engaging on your posts, your videos, your reels, your TikToks, etc., that is no longer... Okay, so that's great warning, everybody out there. If you do not know the person on Instagram or TikTok and they have a really nice-looking page and you do not wish for these folks to think that you're interested in whatever business... (laughs) opportunity they have just don't befriend people you don't know on social media i guess is my message let's get back to jesse a cold market prospect that person is now moved into the warm market they have extended an olive branch saying hi i'm engaging with you this is your opportunity to engage back make sure you write that in your notes (laughs) those are all people you can reach out to and say things like Thank you so much for commenting on my post. I appreciate you. I was just wondering, were you interested in what I'm doing or are you just being supportive? Either way, no problem. 
you guys will have the replay of this. So just write that down and you can always watch this back again. What if you sent that to every single comment? What if you said that to every single story? What if you left this call and you went on every single post you have had in the last week and you sent that message? Every single one of you now has work to do. This also shows people that you care. And I have found that in business, people like to do business with people they know, people they but that's disingenuous. These people don't care. The only thing they care is if they engage enough with you that they hope that they can persuade you into a terrible business model and for you to part with money. I should know. I've had a couple of times where friends of mine, bless their hearts, have had, you know, started once they had kids and they start, you know, kind of fell out the workforce and you know, they wanted to make some extra money, and so they were going, I, then one went into Rodan in Fields, one went to, I think it was, was it Beauty Counter, or one of those businesses, anyway, and, you know, a while back ago, before I really became more educated, uh, in realizing that, really, I don't want to support these business models, I know I want to support my friends, but actually buying these products from my friends and, you know, continuing to perpetuate a business model, which really just is taking money from the majority of the people, about 99% of them, uh, according to statistics. And in, you take a look at a lot of their compensation plans, you can see at the very bottom of those compensation plans, uh, their statements of their income disclosures, these, those folks are not making anything. So um, it's only a very small percentage uh, at the very top, 1% to less than 1%, who are actually making any money. So and a livable uh, income, especially with everything as expensive as it is now. So I would just say to folks, be cautious. They sell it at a very sort of low sort of starter rate because it then seems to be a very low barrier to entry. But there is a lot going on, and the more we look at these people, the more we realize there's people that go from one MLM to the next. There's all types of just, you know, ongoings with these folks. It's just, you know, a lot of caution. Anyway, let's continue with the training. It really is more of a training as to, you know, this is the manipulation tactics that these folks will use in order to have people who are potentially vulnerable people and people who are needing possibly sources of income, generally, that's how they usually lure people is with the money aspect to, you know, participate with these schemes. So just, you know, buyer beware. This is why we're all out here. We want to get this word out. We want to show you just, just kind of not only their manipulation tactics, but just kind of a very expensive training course and what you're getting actually for your money. They like and people they trust. And it is hard to do business with people and build trust with people that you are not having a conversing relationship with. And so when I say directly engage with prospects, what I'm really asking you to do is be social on social media. For whatever reason, this is a difficult concept for some people. I'm not totally sure why, but that's what people are looking for is they're looking for social interaction on social media. That's what the engagement and the interaction is. And lastly, on that note, anytime anyone shares anything of mine, I am the person that always responds back and thanks them for their share. Shares are enormous currency in the social media world. So I'm going to go to brand visibility now. We're going to walk through this. All right. Is it good? Are you guys learning a lot already? Yeah, well, I guess minutes? yes. I mean, technically, yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay. So let's be rocking and rolling. Was. So this brand of visibility, active social media presence is how you're going to build a brand. Now let's stop for a minute and oh, let's okay. talk about this because I'm going to go deep on uh, what I kind of like to call brand avatar or who you are. And this is something that I teach and train a lot. People pay me thousands and thousands of dollars just to teach <laughs> them how to help cultivate a brand. And so I'm glad you're here for uh, less oh, than thousands really? of thousands of dollars and we have a bit of an opportunity to go a little bit deeper at least on this subject so that you're more comfortable okay, with this. Right. The first thing I want you to know about brand is brand is just who are you? Brand is just who are you? Okay, now obviously people are not going to know exactly. Can we stop being a brand? 
Can I just, can I raise my hand in class, please? Uh, Miss Lee, uh, Miss, Miss Ward, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to get the name. Miss Ward, I'm raising my hand in the back of the room here. Um, I'm, you know, just kind of concerned that everybody nowadays is a brand. And I didn't, you know, um, can we draw the line there? Can we just be back to just being regular people, please? Thank you. Exactly who you are through the internet because it is impossible. I just spent uh, time this weekend at a you know, billionaire's wedding, if we're being totally honest, oh. and the profile of the guests, the caliber was oh, incredible, oh, oh, oh. and I was super honored to be there. And looking around, we actually had multiple conversations with multiple people, and we had the... I had I heard they had to sanitize the Biltmore afterwards. <laughs> no, no, that's bad. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to say that. I saw Heidi Powell there, and I was like, "It looks like the Biltmore Estate, which is outside of Asheville, North Carolina. It's a beautiful place." And <laughs> there it is. Just, just so bad. I mean, really, most of us don't care that you were at a billionaire's wedding, Jesse Lee. I, I'm sure everybody was pretentious and boring. <laughs> the chat about how, gosh, you know, yes, we have these brands on social media, and yes, they are who we really are, but look how different we are in person. And I say that to you because as authentic as you are online, and I do believe I'm super authentic online, you will never know me if you aren't spending time with me. I don't know. Somebody who's had a coffee enema and a rectum lying on a bathroom floor in some dubious location probably in Europe. That's getting pretty personal. So I think, Jesse Lee, you've definitely been your most authentic self out there. You had a coffee enema in your rectum. There's no benefit to that. There's actually more chance you will do yourself harm than good. So that's just wild. Yeah, we've seen about all your personal, girl. You'll know you like me or you'll know you don't like me. I'm guessing you guys kind of like me, right? Yes, hopefully. <laughs> uh, but you really get to know people in person. And also, it's okay if your brand changes. Anybody who says they know you but they haven't had a conversation with you in person for six plus months, they don't know you. You should have evolved by now. They know the old version of you. So really, what is brand and how do we come up with this idea? Six months? Six months? Changing in six months? That's a rapid change. I don't know. I'm in a course of study that's going to take me like three and a half years. So six months is very quick change for somebody like me. I'm always open to change. Don't get me wrong. Um, but in a personality? I don't know. That seems odd. Anyway. Okay, keep talking. I'm supposedly learning. Learning recruiting. I'm I'm sorry. I'm a little tired, so if I look bleary eyed, I got up I get up early for work and I just wanted to try to get this done because I have to write a paper this weekend. Idea of this brand avatar. And I know that word can be scary, but brand avatar is really, I want you to think about who am I trying to talk to? Who is my ideal client? And this you might have seen already on that last screen I showed you targeted advertising. This is that niche market idea, okay? This is I'm speaking to specific people. And if you think this doesn't work, I intentionally ran the free webinar into this challenge, speaking to network marketers. I am I can't I don't think I made this point before, but can we not be a brand anymore? Can we just all stop being a brand? I don't know why it just doesn't sit well with me. I guess, you know, I'm Salty Barbie on brand today. <laughs> but, I mean, it just seems odd. I don't know. She talks about humans and brands and I don't know. I, I work in the healthcare industry, I guess, as an RN where it's a caring model. So, just very strange to consider oneself in this respect. But I guess there's a lot of people that's how they view themselves nowadays. It's, it's interesting. Okay, now I'm learning something vaguely interesting. Okay, let's keep going. Not just a network marketing coach. 
a lot of my top platinum clients, and that's my coaching program where you get access to me, you get my real cell phone number, uh, you get to text me, you get my network. If you need me to connect you with somebody, you can need me to connect you with, I don't know, Ed Milet or Trent. <laughs> oh, 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 God. Uh, 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 I had to stop it because I heard some names that were going to give me like toxicity problems. But I was like, she said her personal phone number. Great. You get to pay for that too. I'm guessing like, it, does she have like burner phones? Why is like it a personal number? Is there different phone numbers depending on different things? I just have one phone. I don't want to pay for more than one line. So maybe I'm just cheap. Oh God, she's going to reel off the names of some really terrible people now. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. Trent Shelton or uh, name the people, I don't know, whatever. Humans in my network, that's the Platinums, right? We're talking about scaling businesses, brick and mortar businesses, real estate businesses, Human candy businesses. Can <laughs> Sorry, I keep stopping her. Humans in your network? Well, who else? I mean, uh, is it the dogs in your network? I mean, what else would be in your network other than the humans? I mean, do you think about businesses in your network? Is that how you're... Uh, making this type of uh, division of types of things. <laughs> I just I just find it interesting to call people and individuals humans. It's just not a word when I'm tending to write, you know, about patients. I talk about patients or people or persons or individuals or community. I don't tend to talk about humans. <laughs> it's just very interesting. Anyway. Answer businesses, all kinds of crazy large enormous so, business. What? <laughs> what the cancer centers of America are you on about, Jesse Lee Ward? The cancer business. <laughs> I promise you, people, and you should know best. It really should not be a business, uh, at least within the healthcare model where we have protocols and standards of care and evidence-based practice. And for the majority of us who are clinicians, the idea of it being a business is actually very off-putting to us. We do understand that obviously there's administrators and health insurance and pharmacies and pharmaceutical companies and I mean just a whole plethora of services that surround the care and management and treatment of cancer and cancer patients. But to call it a cancer business is just a <laughs> She's wild. She really is wild. But I guess she's talking about things personal to her. So, you know, that's why she mentioned it. Because she's very well prepared, obviously, for this class. She's got great slides. This is, right? The Platinums are just, you know, they're the leaders, right? And, of course, network marketers. But I don't only speak to network marketers a lot of the time when I am marketing for that. Because it's not just network marketers <laughs> that I'm coaching. I coach business owners of all kinds of different businesses. With this challenge, I knew that I wanted to speak directly to you. I wanted to speak to those of you, whether you have no recruits, whether you have five recruits, 10 recruits, 1,000 recruits, 5,000 recruits. I wanted to speak in this challenge to us, the network marketers, the people that learn their business by not having a business that has tremendous overhead, a business that does not require staffing, a bit, well, until you scale it, and then you're going to want some coaching on that, right? But a business that does not require a lot of these things like keeping the lights on or uh you know having a, a an office building in until of course well it always makes me sort of laugh about the distributors for network marketing companies as they seem to completely forget that there is an entire corporate office for every one of these multi-level marketing companies because there needs to be some type of central headquarter that is going to house, obviously, the executive team, the people who are managing the customer service for the business. I mean, they can't third-party everything out to somebody else. So there does need to have some central 
office headquarter corporate office unless it's one of these really brand new MLM startups um, like was it Elamir or any of these that are just like literally being started by an ex MLM uh, participant and they're starting like some small business but the larger ones like you know Amway and Herbalife and Booty or Body or whatever they're calling it now I can promise it and probably even prove it uh, I'm sure it has like some type of corporate headquarter so for them to always say there's none of that is just actually not true it's only in the respect that the distributors are using their home office uh, to manage their business and hoping probably to write it off in their taxes or to scale and grow, etc. And so I wanted to niche down in that brand and speak to you because it was important that you knew I was talking to you. Am I making sense? I didn't just put out an ad that's like calling all business owners, right? And so this online avatar, this personal brand, crucial for network marketers, crucial because what makes you stand out what makes me join you what makes me do business with you when i could do business with anyone right what is your unique write it down value proposition unique value proposition why are you special right what are the benefits of doing business with you what makes you stand out right this isn't that complicated when you really think about it, but let's go a little deeper. This is going to help you establish credibility. Okay, so I'm developing my UVP, my unique value proposition here. What makes me unique? Okay, well, I guess what makes me unique, and so let's think about my unique value proposition here, is that I am a registered nurse. I also have a bachelor's of education. I also speak pretty decent Spanish. Si hablo español, tú no sabes eso, eh? Entonces, si hay algunos canales que quieren que yo estoy ahí, no, that's terrible Spanish. <laughs> but yes, speak a little Spanish. Um, Obviously, I have a bachelor's in nursing. I'm a grad student. Uh, I'm super salty when needed. Um, and I have absolutely uh, a very small following. I'm a small creator on YouTube. And I like that. So, yeah. Is that my unique value proposition? Would that make me unique? I don't know. Do we get graded at the end? God, I hope so. I love to get graded. This is going to help you attract a targeted audience. It's like I am not in competition with a single one of you. I don't even care if we're in the same company. We are not in competition with each other because who you attract should be completely different. You should attract a specific type of person, a specific type of customer, a specific type of business partner. There should be specific people that are looking for you. So these are some things you got to do. Number one, write it down. Define your target audience. Who are your ideal customers? Who are your ideal team members? Now think about it. We Let's go deeper, this. guys. <clears throat> this is a challenge. This is boot camp. We've got a lot going on, a lot of stuff to do. You need to identify their needs. And a lot of the time, your target audience is people that you once were. Write it down. Who did you used to be? Right? Because you know their pain points. What? You know the things that bothered you when you first started. What? You know, let's say you're a mom and what? part of your demographic. Okay, is okay, moms. okay, okay. All right, now I'm really confused. You asked me to put down my unique value proposition, like what things made me unique, okay? And I wrote down the things that made me unique, and I just listed them on. I won't list them again. Now... You were asking me to do like some trauma thing, trigger warnings, talking about my pain points. Now, I did do sales for quite some time. So <laughs> I know I'm a jack of all trades. But when I worked in uh, certain industries like publishing um, and I understood even when I was doing lectures on English as a foreign language in Mexico, that these 
people, even the schools, who were purchasing our course book materials from the publishing houses that I worked for, like Pearson Education, would be... So I worked as an educator. I have a Bachelor's of Education, and I have written and worked on course materials. So I have actually quite a extensive background in education publishing, uh, public speaking, and uh, I did that for years uh, in Mexico. So I do come with some unique value proposition and I do understand what good training is. And so far, not sure this seems very basic. So this, these two are not the same things. And now you're talking about the pain points which is a sales technique, which has nothing to do with a unique value proposition. It is literally thinking of who would be somebody that would want to have a need for your product. So for example, they always have very general products with these MLM companies. So it's always, you know, supplements, which are terrible. And I wouldn't recommend anybody to ever purchase them but they love to sell those things because they love to create the fear that, you know, nobody livers work correctly, nobody is on the right diet, nobody can eat properly, nobody has a good relationship with food. So they get into all that stuff. Or they sell household goods or, you know, products that women would often purchase, which, you know, shampoos, makeup, uh, clothing, I mean, all this sort of stuff that's just sort of generally purchased items and hopefully items that are purchased pretty frequently. So, you know, there's a reason to keep purchasing these products from these people. And so when you look for the pain points in those types of sales situation, you would call somebody and you would try to get to talking and finding out, you know, where they having any issues with the suppliers? Were they having any issues with pricing? Were they feeling happy with what they were receiving? Were they feeling understood? There's all, and you would just sort of try to ask questions in order to find out what their pain points were so that you could hopefully, you know, offer solutions to their pain points. So that's very different. And I think this is very uh, important to know with multi-level marketing is what they're looking for is your pain because they like to play on the vulnerabilities and this is where they get creepy and scammy and in my mind really um, you know not a very ethical business model. Okay this is part of your avatar. You know the pain points of a single mom? You know the pain points of sitting on a park bench and wanting to not have to go to work and let you in and watch your babies play. You know what it's like to choose diapers over your own handbag, right? You know, these pain <laughs> points, you know what it's like to not have a community. I think the uh, gap between the need to purchase, you know, nappies and the need to purchase a handbag are very uh, far apart from one another. And so I, just kind of speaks to, we know, Jesse Lee, and I'm not going to say anything because I have no children, but that I don't think is what they're sort of, you know, that might be a struggle for you, Jesse Lee, if you were a mom, but I don't think that for a single mom sitting in the park bridge. Just the way she's pale, single moms too. Come on, Jesse. That's just nasty. As a single mom and you're looking for one, and so this business opportunity helps you find that. Those are pain points that you uniquely have. Write them all out. Do the research inside of that niche. What are their interests? You know, maybe it's athletes. Maybe your target demographic is athletes. What are their interests? Why would they want to do this kind of business? What lets them stand out, right? And then tailor your online personality to resonate with that specific demographic. Well, if I'm a business coach and I coach a bunch of business people, have you noticed that a lot of my content in network marketers are business people is business content? No. I don't have my booty out on the internet. <laughs> okay. I'm not wearing skimpy clothes on the internet. I'm not. Post oh. <laughs> <gasps>
I don't mean to laugh, but I don't actually think she looks at her own content then. Because we, when she before she had the cancer diagnosis, she was in very, like, her little sports bras and the leggings and she or she would be flashing her stomach all the time and you know loving all the compliments she was getting for looking thin and then she was lying on the floor having uh coffee enemas in her rectum so i don't know of what part that she's saying that she doesn't have like her booty i mean i don't know if that's the slur to somebody who would have an OnlyFans page or anything, but I, I just think that you certainly have kind of, you know, come out in all different manners recently. <laughs> out with your pick line and the surgical gown. I mean, you've let it all go, girl. All of it. <laughs> posting a bunch of relationship advice on the internet. I'm not posting a bunch of interior decorating advice on the internet. I'm not posting anything except for inside of my target audience. My target audience wants to know about what books I'm reading. They want to know about the events that I go to with masterminds. They want to know about uh, the kinds of things that I'm studying. They want to know about the sort of people that I hang out with and what happens at those business luncheons. They want to know where business people shop. They want to know all of this kind of stuff. What are the tools that I use? What's my office? set up. These are the things that my demographic cares about, right? Why do you think that AI, that, that gold accelerator training with AI, we ended up selling, I don't know, 500, 600 new gold Bossly accelerators. A lot of people wanted to know about how Bossly was utilizing AI to build and scale her business. And I was speaking to the people. <laughs> hey, Jesse, quick question. That 72 page terrible looking uh, textbook that you produce that you call a workbook that as somebody who worked in education publishing and worked alongside authors uh, producing textbooks from young learners like three years old to adult learners up to whatever age that learner wanted to be then I would let you know that the workbook that you produced, if you were using some type of AI to help you generate that workbook, it was terrible. It was just like a stream of consciousness that would rival James Joyce's Ulysses. And I'd be curious to know what you're reading. I doubt it's anything decent. <laughs> In my demographic, is that making sense? Starting to make sense? Yes? Okay. Scam, scam. So this well-defined target audience results in way more meaningful interactions and conversations. So once you define it, that's who you're going to speak to. And catch yourself when you do the trending reels or you do the posts or you do the lives or you do whatever. Are you continuing to speak specifically to those people? And if you're not, stop and rewrite the post. Seriously, just stop. You have to keep everything you do inside of this niche if you want to recruit a lot more people. You can't be all over here and then all over here and then all over here. You have to be focused on that one audience that you're continuing to speak to. The next is you've got to craft a competitor. So exactly who is your limited space audience, Jesse Lee? Who is your demographic? I'm curious because you didn't really let us know. What I, I know the pain point she always talks about is that she was in her mum's basement having to pay some rent. Which, girl, if that's the most amount of pain you've ever suffered, um, apart from obviously what's happening now, that previously was not a lot of pain, to be honest, okay? And she makes a real big deal out of that story. But gosh, so basically the idea in this recruiting is you find out who are vulnerable people like you were once, you know? So obviously all these people, you know, are successful now. They have no further vulnerabilities. They are lavishing uh, in, uh, money and, you know, they're just so wealthy because they're in this MLM, which we know is not true. And then... So <laughs> And then you uh, find poor single mothers struggling to buy nappies and uh, you try to, to reel them into a multi-level marketing scam, allegedly. Okay, that sounds just wonderful. Okay, keep teaching. And like I said, 
I've worked in the education industry and so, so far, really, what she's only spoken about is herself, which, you know, anybody who knows anything about education, um, that's really a big no-no. You don't want to talk so much about yourself. Telling story inside of this brand. Your brand, again, is just who are you. And if you're selling to people that used to be where you are, where you were, excuse me, this is easy. People connect with good. stories. The webinar Whoop. I did, you might have noticed, it was 45 minutes of stories, right? Okay, 35 maybe. 35 minutes of stories. And these are real. I really had a car that could hardly get to and fro all these parties. I really was the person that was driving to every single meeting or carpooling. I really was the girl that woke up at four in the morning to study and learn the product line. Sorry, I was trying to stop her because she said something that I thought was probably wild. <laughs> now I forgot because I'm obviously technically still learning how to get back and forth on a video. So yeah, so off she goes. She's better than everybody else because she gets up earlier. She does way more. Oh, that's right. She was talking a lot about herself. That's right. <laughs> oh, shoot. 20 minutes in. I'm a brand. I have a unique value proposition. And I'm going to look, I'm going to come after single mom. I learned the compensation plan, learn all this stuff because I had to go to an eight to five. And then I would stay up later just to learn. I do know what it's like to be you. I know what it's like when somebody says, oh, this event's coming up. It's $750. And I go, it's what? I don't have that kind of money. And then I had to sell stuff to get there, just like some of you have had to do. And then I remember when I wanted to go to this $10,000 weekend event. It was a two-day um, <laughs> large event. I don't know, 500 people, $10,000 a person. I went, what in the world? But I really need to go. Like I need leadership training. I need to learn how to do this. I remember being the person who thought this is crazy. I don't have this kind of money. This doesn't make any sense for me to go. I know what it's like to be that person. And so when I tell stories around where I came from mm -hmm. or growing up in, this is Jesse Lee preparing people for the funnel down the future path because she is Trying to seed in there the idea that if her trainings become more expensive over time, because that's kind of where they try to, you know, get people into these sales funnels in their training and offering more and more chances to get more access and more pearls of wisdom and more of the keys to being able to mass recruit and make a lot of money and become extremely successful in the multi-level marketing business with the end goal usually to be able to start doing the training courses of which um she says she has a mock i don't know she didn't say what her credentials were prior to doing any of this training so usually when somebody is starting any type of training, you would hope they would give some brief biography of who they are, like schools they attended, businesses, years that they worked, there goes the Jets again. Um, and that did not happen. So I'm really not sure of what her actual educational background is. And I never know actually what book she reads because she never really mentions the title. She just mentions people. But like I said, I think she's trying to plant the seeds to get comfortable. And I'm sorry, if you're selling stuff in your house to go to some scam conference that costs that much money for leadership training, I just don't think um, that's the type of leadership anybody needs, to be honest, because no leadership training I mean, that's just, it's just insane, really. It really is getting like almost Tracy Anderson reserve a mat on a Saturday, insane pricing. In a small country town or starting my business in a room in a basement or not quitting because I needed $300 a month to pay rent or telling you about the first event I ever went to. I, I had to, I carpooled all the way down to Atlanta, Georgia with my head out the window because I'm allergic to cigarette smoke and the car was full of smokers. Slept in a bathtub at the Peachtree Street um, Marriott in Atlanta, Georgia because there was no room at the bed. Like I have all these stories, but these nonsense. Stories are real stories that will tell all of you, hey, this is reality, and I've been there before, and I know what it's like. And so if you want to be a successful network marketer, let me tell you, 
I've been an unsuccessful network marketer. I've been someone who didn't recruit. I've been someone who didn't have a brand. And then I'm somebody now. Wookie wants to say hi to you guys. She's dreaming, by the way. My dog is deaf. So- she, she said the most important part first about the recruiting because that's all network marketing is. doesn't matter what the product is. I don't care what they say. Product is irrelevant. They're all proprietary blends with some label slapped on it anyway. So I wouldn't be too excited about any of it. Uh, if they got a good one, they got lucky. Um, so I really don't, you know, just, oh gosh. It's just, wow. I just, these people. I. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I just, I just... Oh, it's the whole thing just makes me very uncomfortable. Makes me, the whole thing with the Tony Robbins people selling their furniture to get to one of these conferences, it just makes me very uncomfortable. I had a friend of mine once who told me that she wouldn't be my friend unless I did Landmark. And I told her, I guess we just won't be friends. I really don't care. Don't threaten me with some nonsense. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, so I can't You're actually pragmatic. quiet her. <laughs> um, but anyway, I know this microphone picks up any sound that's like in any vicinity. So um, that little squeaking is uh, is my sweet little Wookie. She's the pit bull for those who don't know. But I tell these stories because those stories inside of the brand that has now built this enormous Boss Lee brand, this enormous accelerator brand, it's part of who I am, right? And so you need to start collecting these stories of who you were, who you are, and who you're going to become. That must be the new brand, the Accelerator brand, because prior it was always her Empire team with Prove It. So she is now the Accelerator brand because she's trying to, you know, branch out of, you know, a little bit of the MLM into the coaching training because that's really where the money lies, more so than even the MLMs, which they still make ridiculous amounts of money, but it's, you know, obviously, you know, the recruiting in that is much more, uh, you know, I think there's a lot more difficulty in recruiting people into, you know, a business idea than bringing people into taking a course that say costs $17. So <laughs> that's, you know, that's why this is where the money is. This is why Brendan Bouchard has made $170 million selling personal development. Uh, because that's where the money is. And this is why Jesse Lee Ward has, you know, really pushed to get this training going. But it's just not very well put together. And she just continues to talk about herself. And so I'm losing a little bit of interest. I'm sorry. And trying to get at least 35 minutes filmed for part one because it's an hour, it's over an hour her first day of training. So her day one of training is going to be a two parter for me. <laughs> With probably different shirts. <laughs> um, craft those stories so people can go on the journey with you. People can understand the experiences with you, and people can relate to you in a way that they never expected to. And I like to do that. I like to tell the stories of where I came from because they are real. I remember seeing my up, 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 up line's house. She had two houses. She had a lake house. She had two cars, an Escalade and a Porsche. And I thought, oh my God, I'm a broke 22 year old. What is going on? on I just want to be like her someday and just pretty much following her around like a rag doll trying to learn what she was doing learn her scripts I don't know I just I mean I've never been anybody specifically driven by money so when people are so driven by materialistic objects I'm always like a little bit surprised I guess because I just have been somebody who just that's never been my sole goal and purpose it's not to say I do not appreciate nice things um but I've never necessarily you know needed to have expensive cars or these things because I'm very um I will say a little bit of a person who thinks about sustainability and uh and so it probably would not fall into my ideal way of wanting to be uh living so yeah not 
anything I'm interested in, especially when it comes out of scamming people, you know, out of their money in order to get those uh, objects of materialistic uh, desires. I really don't think that's great. So, yeah. So, yeah. Not anything. So, no. And most 22-year-olds are broke. I was broke as a student at 22, so that's not unusual, you know? I don't understand. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, most of us have low-paid, you know, jobs in the service industry at that time and are probably at school or something. I mean, that's just part of life. Unless your family is extremely wealthy and you've, you know, gone into an internship at Goldman Sachs or something, you're probably going to be like the rest of us, you know, working at a cashier at a, at a supermarket. To learn the stuff the way she acted, right? And so your personal story needs to showcase your passion. What is your passion inside of your brand? What is your passion? Who are you trying to help? What are you trying to do inside of network marketing and your business? And what is your commitment? Please write this down. Your commitment to helping other people succeed. Because if you do that, you will win. Uh, I can give you so many examples of this, but this one is probably the easiest. Okay. Now, at this point, I want to know what happened to the wordy slideshow because I feel like I had one slide and now I'm 23 minutes in. I haven't seen another PowerPoint. What, why only one slide? <laughs> I'm sorry. I was actually at a training today, too, at work. We had, uh, it was about wounds. So that was, I'm so used to seeing them. I actually ate my lunch as I looked at the pictures on the screen. <laughs> but I promise you, everything was supported with the PowerPoint. And they weren't wordy. I was going to say, I should show it. But anyway, this is just wild. She's, and I feel like because of that, there's, you know, there's no breakout rooms for the people participating. I mean, I feel like the interaction with you and the audience is in 23 minutes in. I mean, gosh, I'm tired. Anyway, let's keep going. It's like no breakout rooms. There's barely any PowerPoints. There's, you know, I just feel like anything that would engage a learner is just not here. It's just her talking about herself and the brand and just, it's just the pace is terrible too. Gosh, please. Okay, let's hope it improves over the days because this first day is rough. <laughs> I was number one recruiter in my very first company, my very first year. And I will just tell you, I was not it. I, I was driving a Ford Focus ZX3 hatchback. It was a mint green color. It was terrible. It broke down all the time. I was renting a room in a basement. I did not have much of anything to talk to you guys about. I was certainly not the flashiest. I wore clothes that I had had forever. I wore the same two business casual outfits to every single thing. I would stumble into events basically in a carpool with a bunch of people because I had to get to the events and I had, I had no, no pennies to rub together. Well, how did I become the top recruiter? You may ask. Because I told stories with vision, guys. I would talk to them about how all this was going to happen. I would talk to them about how I don't really know how we're going to do it, guys, but I know that this is the right vehicle. I know this is the right company. I've seen people making a million dollars in this company, and I know it can be us, but we have to get started. You have to buy the business starter pack, and we're going to do this together. I know where I'm going, and I want to take you there with me. Are you in? And I had this conviction, and I had this assurity, and I was telling people where we were going to go enough times with enough passion that people believed it. And the amazing thing is, it all came true. Did some people quit? Oh, you betcha. Everyone might have quit now. I don't even know, right? But I didn't quit. My goals, my passions, my dreams, all of these things that were very near and dear to me and the vision of where I was going to take my business is why I am here today. So your personal story should talk about those passions. What is your commitment to succeed? Did you hear? <laughs> yes. Okay. Let me let her finish. And then I'm going to 
talk about, because I, I want to make sure I, I, I hear her correctly here, and then I'm going to respond. Here that I said in the story, I, I don't know how we're going to do it, guys, but we're going to get there. We're going to get to the top. I know people personally who have two cars, who have two houses, who have made a million dollars a year. Well, y'all personally know me now. Welcome to the Boss Lee Challenge. Hi. I wouldn't talk about the money I've made because the FTC will come crashing down on you. But you can talk about me, your friend. You can talk about your now your business. <laughs> That's awesome. Yes, you're right. Any income claims that these multi-level marketers ever make on any platform or any social media of any type or anywhere can be reported to the FTC because the FTC understands that these people are part of a business model that only the top 1 to 0.1% make any money in it. <sighs> Pull people into your scam. Oh, sorry, into your vision. Sorry, I wrote scam down. <laughs> Silly me. Sorry, <laughs> allegedly. Um, to the top of the line. Basically, so, wow. So, I mean, I guess her vision was we're going to make money. I'm going to promise you lots of money. So every one of her million dollar earners, can you please stand up? Please stand up, as uh, they say. Because I understand that one of the things that you've been obsessed about, Jesse Lee Ward, is the lack of million dollar earners or whatever they like to... I don't even know what they mean by that. I, anyway, oh my God, I'm going to let her continue for about 10 more minutes and then I'm going to in this part because I need to get ready for bed and edit this. <laughs> I feel like it's going to be a late night. Boom. I've got a busy day tomorrow. I've got real work to do. <laughs> oh my gosh. She just, her vision was just get the money out of everybody and drag people along in your scam. Business coach, you can call me your business coach if you want to, right? I'm coaching you in business right now. Facts tell, story sell. It just is what it is. So that's relatability. Your commitment to helping other people succeed. And then also <laughs> very useful is the transformation that you've undergone. Use these stories and be super authentic. Be super inspiring. I mean, I think part of the reason I'm still a goofball, I'm kind of goofy, right? <laughs> okay. Is because I don't ever want people to put me up on some pedestal where all of a sudden I'm better than you. I don't think I'm better than any of you. I don't think that I'm... Is this the lady that, like, I saw, like, some weird video, <laughs> I wanted to react to it, where everyone's standing there with, like, money and, like, literally, like, kissing the dollar bill? It's, like, the most toxic thing I've ever seen about money. I I'm sorry. I'm just somebody who's not that impressed about money and all that stuff. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just never been that much. I just... You know, I live a pretty simple life and I'm okay with that. And so I've never, and I just don't care. <laughs> so um, none of these things would ever work with somebody in my mindset, I guess, because they like to use that word too. Oh, I love the thing about the FTC. She is just, you know, out here just telling it like it is. Get, get people into your scam, allegedly you know, King Kong or Queen Kong or whatever. I don't think that, uh, am I really incredible? Number one in the world in network marketing right now? Yeah. It doesn't make me bad than you. It just means I put in more hours than you. It just means I got more experience than you. It just means I've been told no more than you. Okay. But these real stories about the transformation of. I need to see some actual hard evidence that you are the actual number one network marketer in the world. Because from what I've heard, that's not the case. You're not even number one in proven. So if you're not the number one in your own company, how can you be the number one in the globe? I, I, I want to know what the ranking, who ranked you there, um, and on what metrics was that rank based on? Because... Is it on the number of recruits? Uh, is it on how much you sold? Is it on how many um, blatant lies you tell to your audience? I mean, I want to know. There's no statistics here. So I'm sorry. <laughs> She's just not believable in this. I don't believe you. 
I do not believe you. It says, do not disturb now. It's Betty time. Kind of the ugly duckling girl. Go look at my old photos, man. People go, did she have plastic surgery? She has a nose job. No, never touched my nose. She filled her cheeks. No, it's genetics. She lifts her eyebrows. Have you seen my mother? She must have done something to her jaw. No, I think I just hit like maturity or something. I don't know what to tell you. Okay. <laughs> but these are real stories. Jesse Lee, your, 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 your forehead is not moving at all. Okay. So, and you, you, your eyebrow, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You are using a neuromodulator of some brand in order to obtain that because you have moved your face a million times and the fact that your brows have not moved neither your forehead and you've made quite a, you know, quite a few facial expressions gives me the, um, thought that you are using a neuromodulator. Stories. These are real stories and they no, should inspire people. They should inspire others and I want them to inspire yeah. your people too. So step two inside your brand is create a compelling story. I told you we were going deep. We are nowhere near done today. Same nowhere system. near. I hope y'all don't got nothing to do right now. Next they have the technique so you can still like move the brow, but the forehead part right here is just not moving at all. So, <laughs> girl, you know you got neuromodulators in your forehead, probably around the crow's feet too. <laughs> I hate it when people just don't tell the truth. This is the consistency in the branding. So what is your branding looking like on all platforms? <laughs> This one is important. It's going to be weird for some of you, but I want to give this to you now. Your profile photo on all platforms, threads, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, whatever. Same photo. Same exact photo. Oh, okay. Find a headshot you love and use it everywhere. <laughs> if you're going to change it on LinkedIn, change it on YouTube, change it on Facebook, change it on TikTok, change it everywhere. You want one consistent message. Everyone to know it's you. Okay. Same profile picture, same handle. There's only one. I'm Boss Lee. There's not like I'm Boos Lee. I'm Boos Le. Uh, I'm Boss Le. Like, people have all these fake profiles. I'm Boss Lee 1. No, 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 no. It's just I'm Boss Lee. Everywhere. I'm Boss Lee YouTube. I'm Boss Lee Twitter. I'm Boss... I don't even use Twitter, though. I'm Boss Lee Threads. I'm Boss Lee Instagram. I'm Boss Lee TikTok. I'm Boss Lee Facebook. It's the same everywhere. It's consistent messaging everywhere. Yours should be, too. If you're someone who wants to do the color schemes and whatever... Great should be consistent everywhere. The importance of the consistency is that it builds trust everywhere. Your audience is going to easily recognize you, easily remember your brand when they come across it online. Okay? Drink your water. It's not trust, really. It's brand recognition. <laughs> that's what it is. It's brand recognition. That's, that's, that's why you use the same consistency. And I don't use a photo in my YouTube profile picture, and none of my <laughs> accounts are the same. So I promise you, my friends look at my stuff on Instagram, which has nothing to do with my YouTube channel. In fact, a lot of my friends don't even know I have this YouTube channel. So <laughs> I've completely left the warm market out of my recruiting sus for subscribers. So I already... I'm not uh, doing very well uh, as a network marketer in Jesse Lee Ward's mind. Okay. Okay. Gosh. Some of this stuff is very, I feel, a little bit basic. Um, that would be for, like, very novice people who've had no experience with marketing or branding or anything of that nature. So... Um, yeah, interesting. Okay. It's, I just, I, I feel like, I guess I'm a little bored because this is nothing. I'm not really learning a lot that's new here, except, you know, how much she's just not really been anything about, about herself, really. So let's keep hearing in this training, if which is with no interaction, no PowerPoints again at this point, uh, no breakout rooms, no taking questions from the audience. Um, I just feel it's very dry, so I'm not 
feeling that this training is great at this point. I'm used to having far more um, exciting training um, than this. And I work in some really dry topics in the medical field. <laughs> but this is just, there's no variation. It's just her talking. It's all it is. Wow. Jeez, this is somebody who really likes the sound of their voice. God, I feel like I'm having a run for my money. <laughs> Valuable content creation is step four. If you want to have a successful brand, we're going to talk so much about this, by the way. So don't think I'm just glossing over this. Okay. I need us to create more content that is relevant, that educates, entertains, and adds value. Educates, entertains, and adds value to your audience's lives. What does this look like? This could be blog posts. This could be amazing captions you write with a photo. This could be videos that are valuable. This could be photos that are valuable. This could be the carousel posts on Instagram where you see a bunch of different, um, you know, tip one, tip two, tip three, you're swiping. That's called a carousel. It could be that. It could be the podcasts. If you don't listen to the People's Mentor podcast, that's mine. You can listen to that. Okay. okay? You right. should. Okay. Where is your valuable content creation? Position yourself as an authority inside that I thought, like, it seems like a lot of work. The only reason why I say this is I thought, like, usually when they're advertising these multi-level marketing business opportunities, it's supposed to be able to be, fat, you know, popped into the pockets of time in your day and all this stuff. Sorry, I'm getting tired. I get up early in the morning. And uh, yet this is like... Oh my gosh. I mean, this would be a full time job and uh, graphic design and marketing. And you're not being paid for anything at this point, unless you've actually recruited somebody at this point and you've obtained some large downline so that you can continue to absorb the people who leave your downline. Then you are working and putting in a lot of stuff. Um, and, and probably making and making no money at this point. And also just be very weary too that I when you sign up with these companies and you then use your Instagram and your TikTok and so forth, any of your social media platforms, I believe they then have rights to the content that you produced and put into that during that time. So just be very cautious. When you're joining these companies, definitely do your research. Don't listen to the, they always want to say, don't listen to other people. Just, just get in with it. You're going to make the money. Because anytime it's a scam, I can let you know, the first thing they tell you to do is don't do the research. So that's already a red flag because anybody who is interviewing for a legitimate position with a company you are encouraged to have done your research ahead of time so that when you actually go in for real recruiting or hiring and job interviews and so forth, you actually are prepared to answer questions about the company, the position, how you think you would fit in, how you fit with their values and so forth. But in this case, this is not anything that's being paid at this point. So, and then they own your material. So just caution with that. I mean, this is why these companies are bad. And you're not the business owner, okay? You're advertising for free for an upline, literally, who's making the money. And you're probably going to feel frustrated because they're going to rub their money in your face. Now she's saying it took her for some time. They usually tell you it's pretty quick. And, uh, it's just, you know, it's just, it's just bad business, man. I don't know what else to say. Gosh, these, these people are making money to try to just get people to want to fantasize about, you know, money. I just think it's really, you know, there's so many things in life that are just so much more, valuable you know i love the fact that she loves her dogs you know that's a really nice thing um but this money worship is something that i just i've never gotten it never have it's always been something that sat poorly with me even since i was a kid
niche we talked about. Why did I become an authority in network marketing? Well, I built my own network marketing company to the top. Then I started speaking on the stages like GoPro or with Fraser at the Ninja Networker events or on Ray Hick. I want to just express that GoPro is not the camera. It's like some type of accelerator type uh, network marketing. I don't know who does that. I can't remember the person who does the GoPro. It's probably Ed Milet. It's one of those, or Ed Worry, or whatever, Eric Worry, or whatever their names. It's one of those guys that does that one. Anyway, she's going to list out some grifters with some grifty conferences. Higdon Stage, or oh God, I spoke Ray Higdon. Oh, the man who's recently pivoted the Christ as well. God, he is one that a lot of people have started to show him. I wish more people would be interested in just what a scam this guy is. Because now he's like, tried to, he's got into the Christian thing. I don't mean to say it like that, but it's just for these these those guys it's a scam again it's like a prosperity ministry scam it's just never good five more minutes and it is gosh it's just good. I feel like it's the longest five minutes of my life Look on all these podcasts, Simon Chan, whatever, all of the podcasts. Mm, I went wow. all over the place. I became an authority figure. Then I started speaking at network marketing conferences. I was at the DSN. I'm the only network marketing rep who has ever spoken for the Direct Sales Association, with the exception of Gloria Mayfield Banks. It's just the two of us. Like, it just happened over time because I put myself in those rooms. I put myself in those situations. I consistently created valuable content for people. I became an authority inside of network marketing by putting out the People's Mentor podcast. I became an authority inside of network marketing for doing trainings as often as I did trainings. I became an authority in network marketing by doing tons of free content specifically for many years just toward network marketers. Only when the Boss League Accelerator came out in November of 2022 did I ever start coaching just everyone. Most of you didn't know that I would coach one-off real estate agents or I'd coach one-off um, roofing companies or I'd coach one-off one-on-one uh, -on -one business owners of brick and mortars. It was not until the Accelerator did people realize, oh, Jesse Lee also owns a bunch of traditional businesses. I kept that super under wraps. Because I wanted to be an authority in the network marketing space first. That was my first priority. So what is your first priority that you want to position yourself as an authority in? So if your brand is health and wellness, okay, what are your insightful health and wellness tips? promise you, none of the people sitting on this call are experts in health and wellness. We certainly know this lady is not an expert in health and wellness at all. That I have debunked her medical misinformation, lack of knowledge, lack of understanding of the American healthcare system, lack of understanding how health insurance works, what is, you know, anything. I mean, just showed, and then she stopped doing it again. As I say, where's part three of your journey, Jesse Lee? I'm waiting. I want to react. Anyway, uh, and I don't do TikTok, so I don't know what, she's, what nonsense she's saying on TikTok. I mean, <laughs> TikTok. Anyway, <laughs> I'm getting real salty now because I'm getting tired. I want to edit this and upload it to YouTube. And hopefully this editing won't be the bear that the last editing was. That's what I'm hoping. But anyway, Jesse Lee, this has been 31 minutes. I'm feeling brain fried because the only person that you have spoken about in this entire training is yourself. So I, is this just going to be five days of you blowing s smoke up your own arse? Because que hueva, as they say in Mexico. God. What questions can you answer often that make people feel like, wow, she's the authority. Wow, he's the authority. What kind of posts can you put out that address common challenges faced by people? If you want to be a top recruiter, what are commonly asked questions? Well, this isn't that difficult. People always want to know what does it cost to get started? People always want to know uh, what kind of training do I get? People always want to know what are the events like? People always want to know, can I cancel at any time? People always want to know, is there an auto ship? People always want to know, what's the compensation like? People always want to know the same 
I'm stopping you there. Nobody wants to know about the Alto ship. Nobody. Nobody. Ain't one person. You. You're the only person. Girl, you definitely have a neuromodulator. You are so... Oh, my... I, you know, I just dislike it when people are not truthful. She always says, girl, you are... Mm, anyway... Question, so why don't you put out a lot of consistent content that answers all these questions so that people are fully aware of what you are, who you are, and what you do? Does this make sense? Now, something you can do as a little tactical thing is you can do this in your Instagram stories. If you sit down and you do a hands-free story and you answer all the commonly asked questions about your business and you make them a highlight this is, this is like a million dollar tip. A highlight on your social oh, media page, what do I do? People will watch it and do a call to action at the end of everything that says, 